Welcome to our escape game, October 2018. It's called The Curse of the Mummy. And we wanted to take you through a walkthrough. This is the Oasis of Amshir. And this is where our guests would wait until it was their turn. And then they would return to mix and mingle and chat. And we had Mummy with Brandon Fraser playing. I'm gonna take it up to the ceiling because that looks pretty cool. And here's where they would begin the game, and I'll turn the light on so it's easier to see in a second. And then, of course, here's our watering station. Upon coming to and accepting this adventure and challenge, this was what we read them. The quest is to stop the mummy from rising from the dead. Welcome to Hamanoptera, City of the Dead. Your common friend, Howard Carter, discovered the remains of an ancient pharaoh, Tutankhamun. Upon his sudden passing, he pleaded with you to return the ancient disc he took from the sarcophagus. He learned that if the disc is not returned by 10 o'clock tonight, the mummy will arise and become a walking plague on this earth. First they started with the box. Once they figured out the code, inside they found four diaries that belonged to, or it was one diary but in four pieces. The diary reveal belongs to Howard Johnson. And in each of these diaries are hints and tips and clues that they are going to need throughout the game to solve a series of, of clues. And this game originated from a, an escape game that we had bought called uh, The Lost Mummy, I think. Also in this box, we just added a lot of things to it and made it very 3D. There's a key, and this key goes to this box. And when you put the key there, inside here is a code, and the code unlocks the door. Okay, so entering, we have this cool little thing here. Mm, might want to remember that a little bit, just a picture. And then we have these discs. And this was usually like the last thing people would figure out. <laughs> but these discs have very specific symbols on them. And they each have this line. So if you actually followed with your finger, I'm going to step on anything, the lines. But most people would go straight to this right here. And this is called the Rosetta Stone. And it has fallen apart and you need to align the Rosetta Stone pieces back into the Rosetta Stone. And in the diaries, there are these clues. And once you had the Rosetta Stone piece together, I would give you this piece of paper because this comes in handy throughout the rest of the game. And you just want to pick this up and carry it around. Also, if you notice, there is this box right here. It says, collect five camel spiders. And those right there are the camel spiders. Once they collected five of those, they would get this ancient scroll would come out of that. This is a um, scarab beetle spinner. And once you figured out this clue, you would get another scroll. So eventually, these would all end up right there at the end. Down to this box of scarabs that have specific colors on them. There are also symbols on this chest. So you would move the scarab to the correct symbol. And once those are all in the right place, open the drawer and here are the stones. Okay, there's the pyramid and throughout the hallway are placed these pyramids which they would find and then put them together. Once they unlocked this one, they would get this last scroll so we'd end up with three scrolls and then the code to the beetle jar which they had to go do down the hallway there. This stone. It says, open the door by connecting the path to reveal a four digit code. So they had to decipher using the Rosetta Stone what these words meant. And the scrolls helped them decide which one of these stones goes in the holes. So here we are going to enter the next room. 
And I'll give you a look at what it looks like and then turn on some lights. Here is our kitchen cupboards. And they have hanging on them, those are called cartouches. Those come in very handy when solving this puzzle right here. And then the rest of it, this is the ancient burial chamber. It's hard to see that with that light. So here we've got different canopic jars and some pedestals and a scale where you can weigh the heart. And we have our guardians of the underworld to protect the door and Osiris who had wings. So the quest in this room is to find a way out by checking to see if the heart balances with the feather of truth. So at this point we would have people break, break and they take their big group, which is between four and six people, and break them into smaller groups. And this puzzle was a really fun one to create. It had a lot of people stumped, so I had to usually talk them through it, but it was pretty cool. So I'll talk you through that one. See, can you see words by chance on those cartouches? And there's a symbol and also a color. Once they got in this box, they received the heart. And this heart and that heart say the same thing. You could puzzle it together or you could read this one. Um, it's a little hard to read though. But these are instructions as to where these canopic jars need to be placed on the table. And on these feathers are these funky symbols. And in the diaries, there are some clues as to what those symbols mean. Like here's this one, and here's that one. Also, they had to figure out these canopic jars here. The head, or the top, that matched the specific jar. And once all those jars were all matched up correctly, then they have to come over here to these, and there are specific symbols on these how much the heart weighed on this side of the scale and hopefully they matched and if they matched you could open if the feather and the heart balance inside here ah there we go was this code and a whole bunch of these little tiles and these little tiles in that code would then go over here on one of these guys' this belt right here. Okay, so upon entering this next room, this is what people would see. The blinds were usually closed though. We have four pillars with some games. There's some pyramids over there. I know some decorations, some crazy fancy box, and then lots of treasure. And we had a lot more treasure out, and we had this stuff all over the place, so it looked really shiny and ritzy in here. It was really fun. So the task in this room is to discover the code to the tomb by aligning the obelisks with the pyramid. So in this room, people it ended up coming... Um, each we're playing a game on each one of these pillars. Notice that these pillars have Roman numerals on them. That'll come in handy. This was probably the hardest game. Um, it was a fun one. You had to get the onk to the place where the onk is by sliding the pieces around. You couldn't pick them up. That was a fun game and that's usually the game that stumped most people. It was really fun. And this is just a puzzle and I left it together but usually the pieces were all mixed up and then they would have to arrange them until they were all put together in the right order. So that was just a fun and easy one. Over here on this pillar is an onk, and it was missing these three gems. They go right here. And these gems were hidden all over in the treasure, and they were in different places all the time. So they'd have to look through the treasure to find the gems. And once they found the gems, then that puzzle was complete. And then this is a fun game. This is an actual Egyptian game, and it's called Sonnet, and it's we don't play it the way you actually play the game in this game, but it was a fun Egyptian touch. Uh, if you did the feathers, if you recognize these symbols, then this was a good one for you because you would do the math problem. There would be a symbol. The rocks had a similar symbols, and then you would match up the numbers on the playing board. So that was really fun. And once you completed all of these games, they would be moved aside by the person manning this room. And underneath was revealed these little um, 
symbols. And on this cool chest over here that my husband made, because he loves to make stuff like this, it says, open the drawers in order to match, by matching the symbols. So in these drawers, you will find the obelisk pieces that you need for the last piece of the game on the other, over there. Also, we'll spin this around and read this. It says, align the small pyramids on the pillars, then pull up on this center piece. This center piece won't come out until those drawers are out. And those over there are the small pyramids. Then you could pull up on this piece to reveal, if I can get it out, this last piece with the, is the pyramid. And in this game that I'm going to reveal here in a second, uh, this was part of the original game we bought as well. This, just this piece, everything else we added. Um, there are like seven or eight clues within these journals that help you put this game together. This piece of the game took quite a bit just by itself. So eventually you would figure out where the pyramid gets placed. You would have to align all the obelisks in the right place according to the journals. And eventually you would come out reading a code. These gems are placed on the entrance to the tomb to let you open. And so that's how that would go. And that was kind of fun. All right, and here we are walking into the burial chamber. These are where those colored gems would go. And then they would enter this room here. And let's see if I can give you a look at what it looks like before I probably turn on another light. That's where we entered. The quest of this room is to place the correct disc on the sarcophagus to keep the mummy locked away forever. So looking around, this is one of the first things people would find is this is eyes and they coordinate with these eyes right here okay. you just move the sticks up and down to change the eye color and in here once you did that you would come in here and you would get out this it's a key and we're going to place the key right here for a minute and then most people would go to this thing here first too right here is a thing that says to place these three gemstones in this urn and those gemstones are hidden throughout the room we place them in there and once you do you get this right here and this right here and now in the journal there's a series of ones and zero codes and so these move up and down and you would figure out the ones and zeros code and then open this to get this and perhaps this looks somewhat familiar so you would match these up which was the code to this thing right here and these would put in the right order and we would move it and in here was this triangle now something fun about this area was usually when they were right here Somebody would push this button and the snake would smoke. It's hooked up to a fog machine and it would scare the people, so it was really fun. And then you would take this and align it. There's a hole in the back and align it on here. If I can find it, there we go. And then these are the symbols that they need. it needs to line up with, which is that. To which you would then pull out the Book of the Dead from uh, the Mummy return or from the Mummy with Brandon Fraser, to which then you would line up the key and turn it the way you need to turn it because it tells you. And the book opens. This was one of my husband's engineering projects that he absolutely loved. He did such a good job. And in here, you have two discs. You have a scarab and you have an eye disc, and they have a magnetic thing on them and so the magnetic thing hooks to that one on the 
thing. And this was a really fun part because they would sit here. After going through an hour escape game, They uh, most people would come in here and as a group they would argue about which one would keep him alive and which one would keep him dead. And there are some clues in the journals that explain which one does what. And so that was always fun to be in here and hear them do that last bit. And if they put the correct one on, then we... Um, celebrated with them and they were whew, we saved the world and if they put the wrong one on they died and it was kind of funny because after an hour of being in an escape game they picked the wrong disc and they died so we only had a couple groups die and we had I don't know how many groups 15 to 20 groups come through this game um, and it was a lot of fun um, this game took about an hour we've had such a good time with the escape game this year it's really been a blast